When I received the news that my book on Bolshevism had been translated into Arabic, I was absolutely delighted. This was the best news I could possibly ever receive. Now, I wrote this book quite a long time ago. It's been translated into many languages, but I think that this particular edition, it, it, it was translated last year for the information into Russian, the year before that it was translated into Greece and so on. It must have been translated now into about 20 different languages. And yet this particular event, I think, is especially important for me and for the international Marxist tendency and for Bolshevism as a political trend. Now, I wrote this book quite a long time ago, decades ago, and I based it on my extensive reading, of course, of the subject. You can see beside me, behind me rather, you can probably see my shelves, the collected works of Lenin and Trotsky, the other Bolsheviks, the, also the, 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 the minutes of the Congresses of the Bolshevik Party, <clears throat> which I collected when I was a student studying in the Soviet Union. Plus my own experience of, of revolution in many countries, in many continents, and also in Spain, where I participated in the personally uh, in the revolutionary struggle against the Franco dictatorship, <clears throat> and subsequently in Venezuela, where I was quite close to the late president uh, Hugo Chavez, who also ha had this book, by the way, was very pleased, <clears throat> the first book that I gave him, and he was quite pleased, very pleased to receive it. But I wrote this, I, I got, start, got the idea for this book when I was a student in Moscow, Moscow State University in, in 1970, that was. And at the time I happened, uh, I was lucky enough to meet two very old ladies that had been secretaries of Lenin after the revolution. Now, they must be long dead, of course, they were quite old at the time. It was a brief meeting, it didn't have much consequences as such, and yet I felt very strongly that here was a kind of concrete link, uh, if you like, a rejoining, a retying of the knot of history, a direct link between the international Marxist tendency represented by myself and by this book, directly to Lenin, to the Bolshevik Party, and to the October Revolution, which for us remains the greatest single event in human history. Now, as a Marxist and a revolutionary, I do not regard history as something dead and uh, buried, uh, like some kind of a, a dry old fossil, dry old bones in, in some mu museum. Oh no, 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 for me history is something that's very much alive. It is, in a sense, from a standpoint of the working class, which is my, my class, that's what I stand for, it represents a struggle that started long ago and is not yet finished. Yes, comrades and friends, our struggle is an unfinished struggle. And therefore, for that reason, history contains uh, very important lessons for the workers and the youth of today who wish to fight for a change in society. Now, that's why I wrote this book. It's not written for academic books. There's plenty of academic books. I'm, I'm not very fond of academics, as a matter of fact. I have rather poor opinion of them. But in any case, this book is not written as, a, as an academic thing or merely of historical interest. Oh, no. If you like, I wrote this as a kind of manual of revolution. I was attempting to, whether it's successful or not, I don't know. Many people have said that it is successful. You make up your own mind. But it, it is intended to contain all the, the fundamental lessons of 30 years of struggle of the Bolshevik party from its earliest beginnings uh, up to the Russian Revolution and even a, a little bit afterwards, not too much because that was the, the subject of a different book which I won't discuss. And why do I say that this is important? Why should we study history? I'm well aware that the postmodernists who I consider to be absolute idiots and who dominate the universities, I'm well aware that they, th they consider that history contains no lessons. You can learn nothing from history. Of course, they've learned nothing from history. Then they, they've learned nothing from anything. That history is just a, a, a series of accidents. Well, I uh, beg to differ. I believe that history does have an inner logic, which you can understand, and from which you can draw lessons. Oh, yes, very important lessons. And I think the importance of history was summed up by a man who's not a Marxist, but a very intelligent man, an American philosopher called George Santayana, you may have heard of him. 
who said the following, a very interesting remark. He who does not learn from history will forever be doomed to repeat it. Worthwhile well, you thinking about that. And I think that those words are particularly important for the Arab world. I personally consider the Arab world, the Middle East, shall we say, and North Africa, of course, all part of this great common culture, linguistic and cultural history, going back for, for thousands of years. The cradle of human civilization. Maybe one tenth, the people in the West tend to forget this. The, the Middle East was the, 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 the cradle of human civilization. Egypt, Mesopotamia, and so on. These are now the Arab lands. They weren't at that time, but they're now the Arab lands, which has got a very rich culture. I won't go into that. That's a separate question. A tremendous uh, culture and a tradition which is um, deserving, I think, of more, more interest in the West. But above all, I think that the Arab, for, for, as a Marxist, the workers and peasants of, uh, of these countries, of these lands, above all have set us a tremendous example in, in the form of, of revolutionary traditions, revolutionary struggle, tremendous struggles against uh, imperialism, capitalism, exploitation and oppression of all sorts. Yes, showing tremendous courage and tremendous uh, determination to fight for their rights. And that struggle, of course, as you well know, remains unfinished. Yes, because it's got, this, the, the, the coin has got another side, hasn't it? Uh, it's also the history of great defeats, great struggles, great revolutions, yes, and great defeats too, great defeats. And in every case, I would go so far as to say that the masses, like in Egypt a few years ago, the marvelous Egyptian revolution, and in other countries, in Syria and Iraq, in the Sudan, I could mention many, the masses have always shown the most colossal courage they deserved to win. And if they did not win, I think it was not their fault. It wasn't the fault of the workers and peasants that all these tremendous sacrifices and struggles and heroism did not lead to victory. Whereas in Russia, it did. And what's the difference? What's the fundamental difference? That the revolutions have got a very similar content in many respects. You'll find many things similar if you read this, uh, this book to your own country, your own traditions. But there's one fundamental difference, and it makes all the difference. In Russia, the victory was assured, the victory of the October Revolution was assured by one thing, and one thing only, and that was the presence of the Bolshevik party under the leadership of two men, Lenin and Trotsky. And without those factors, the, the revolution would never have succeeded. I could demonstrate the truth of that. But read the book and you'll see. <clears throat> What, I, what I'm driving at. And therefore, this is of, of enormous importance. It's enormously important that the young generation in Egypt, in the Sudan, in Algeria, in all these countries, in the Lebanon, everywhere, Lebanon, everywhere where you can see the, the revolutionary elements of present. I'm thinking of the Lebanon, I'm thinking of the Sudan. Inspiring struggles. Yes, but the same thing would apply, my friends, isn't it? Without the necessary organization and leadership, without the party, I'm saying, and without a revolutionary party and a revolutionary leadership, unfortunately, very often these revolutions will, will lead to defeat. And the consequences of defeat in the Arab countries, as you know, is, is very severe, very terrible. Ask the Egyptians about that, they'll tell you all about it. And therefore, I, I think that it is fundamental, it may not seem to be the case, Sometimes people are a bit, young people are a bit impatient, you know, they want immediate results and quick things. The problem is, there's no easy way. There isn't. There's no quick path to success. The Bolshevik Party, as the book will demonstrate, if you read it, will demonstrate, Lenin had tremendous difficulties, tremendous problems he faced. In building a party, by the way, in a backward, semi-feudal country, don't, don't you think that Russia was, that it was, more backward at that time than Egypt is today, probably, from the point of view of industrial development and so on. Lenin faced enormous objective points, and yet, despite all these difficulties, he succeeded. Yes, but ultimately, you read Lenin's writings, ultimately, it, it's all based on one thing, and that is our ability to educate revolutionary cadres. One educated revolutionary is worth 10 or a dozen or a hundred unprepared, untrained people. No, no, we need to, to train, if you like, 
the officers, the sergeants, the corporals, the lieutenants, the captains, yes, and the generals, if you like, of the revolutionary army. We need to be prepared. The enemy in front of us is very prepared and very organized and very disciplined and very centralized. And we have to be the same. We have to also have a proper organized, disciplined revolutionary party. This doesn't drop from the clouds. It cannot be improvised at the last moment. It must be prepared in advance. And this, my friends, I'm speaking directly to my brothers and sisters in the Arab world. I'm speaking from heart to heart to you as one revolutionary comrade to another. Your task is, first of all, to prepare yourselves, to read, to study, to prepare yourselves for the great tasks which impend. Because now the capitalist system is undoubtedly in a crisis, an existential crisis on a world, on a global scale, which has never been seen before. Never, it's never been faced in 300 years. There's never been a crisis like this. And it's pregnant with revolutionary potential. Oh, yes. Enough of the, the pessimistic old men. There's too many of them around. Burnt out old men and women. You probably get them in Cairo and other places, uh, sipping their mint tea and mourning about everything. Oh, everything is lost. Everything is hopeless. And so, not so, my friends. Not so. This battle is not finished. Okay, we are in a war here, and uh, it's a fundamental war. It will continue. And as night follows day, I put this to you clearly, don't listen to the burnt out, demoralized, disappointed old pessimists. Don't listen to them. Throw them to one side. They're useless garbage. They're in our way. They're a problem. Get rid of them. Turn your backs upon them. And look to the new generations, the youth, the young people, the, the new generations that, that are rising up. They're not, not afraid as the old guys are are afraid, afraid of their own, sound of their own voice. No, 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 no. Look to the new generation, that's my advice. Look to the youth in particular. And the youth must educate themselves. Just to learn, you must learn, young comrades, please. You must learn and develop yourselves. It's the only way, you know. That's the only genuine school of revolution. And therefore, I hope in, in a modest way that this book will play a significant role in helping you to understand what Bolshevism was, what the Bolshevik party really was, what the ideas of Lenin and Trotsky genuinely were. This is important. Not for a hundred years ago, my friends. It's important for you and for me and for all of us now at this decisive moment in history. Anyone that doubts the revolutionary potential in the city of better take a look at the United States. That's a surprise, isn't it? Not to me. But certainly not a, surprise, not a surprise to me or any educated Marxist what is taking place at this moment. As I speak, an insurrectionary wave in the United States of America, the wealthiest and most powerful imperialist nation on earth. Yeah, there's your answer. That's the definitive answer to all the burnt out old pe pessimists, the dead fish I call Forget about them. That inspirational movement which is spreading everywhere to my own country, Britain, France, Germany. In Britain yesterday, the demonstrators hurled down a statue that had been there for 300 years in the city of Bristol. The statue of a slave trader. They lived for 300 years. And in a matter of hours, they pulled it down and threw it into the stinking waters of, of the docks in Bristol. Now that sh should tell you something about what's happening in my country, what's happening everywhere, and what as night follows day is going to happen in your country also, in Egypt. You see the elements of it already in the, in the rebel Lebanon, in the Sudan and other countries. But what's, I can't emphasize this too strongly. What is missing is the essential ingredient. It's the revolutionary party and a revolutionary leadership. That's what must be created in the shortest possible time. And that, as in Russia in 1917, my friends, is the only real guarantee of the success of the socialist revolution, upon which again depends the entire future of humanity, of civilization, and of ultimately of the human race. And therefore, I commend this book to you with every possible enthusiasm. Please contact me with any contacts, any comments that you have, rather. I wish you every success in your revolutionary work. Comrades, with clear revolutionary ideas, the victory is ours, the future also is ours.